Revelation chapter 2 verse 10 Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, or Hashem, Yahweh Shai, or Hashem, or Kakogash. Next, double honors to the head apostle slash other bishops with great millstone, the one that taught me the 100% truth according to the Bible, peace, blessings, and safety. So all you sincere items, keep pushing, keep believing. Keep the faith of God so people here for a bed, man. Just another lesson on the Lord saying he's going to be there for us. Fear, fear none of them. We're going to suffer. We're going to go through what we got to go through. We're paying for our sins, of course. But the Lord, it's, it's always hope that faith, man. Boy, the water you have, but you know, shall have for faith, man. Be thou faithful unto death. So no matter what comes our way, the Lord is telling us, keep faith in him. It's going to be okay, Israel. And, and then we, we one day closer to this devil getting thrown out of rulership. The Lord coming and snatches this devil power away from me, man. As soon as I woke up this morning, every morning I wake up, one day closer. One day closer. Ain't no going back. <laughs> Time ain't going back, man. Time is pressing forward, man. This devil almost out of here, man. Oh, you know, sleeves and eat, man. The, the clock is ticking, man. The Lord said, no matter what comes upon you, don't fear it. Once again, revelation that faith, man. What a wonderful gift, man. And then faith won't even give it to every Israelite. So right about now, the majority of our people, they're not taking heed to word. They're not even thinking upon the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahushua right about now, man. You see, they're not in the mind frame of repenting, turning back sorrowful to, to Yahweh Bashim Yahushua, you know, begging for mercy. They, they're not even thinking about the kingdom of heaven being established, established on the face of the earth and all these nations um, being ruled, you know what I'm saying, over, man. But we are, though. So just a quick little hit through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahushua, no matter what comes our way. Because since I'm making the video, I'm, I'm speaking for myself as a woman. Look at this shit. I mean, that's that's madness right there. Anybody come through with a with a bike or anything, that's that like that dude was going over a hundred. You know. But but the scriptures say fear not to see our people, they don't fear the Lord. They, they tempt the Lord each and every day. Nick Rose, Latinos, and Native Americans, they constantly tempt the Lord. When the scriptures say, tempt not the Lord. They tempt the Lord with their madness, with their wickedness. But judgment going to come. But what the Lord is saying, because we fear Yahweh by Shemel That's why the Lord is telling us, this is red letter. That's why the Lord Yahweh is telling us, fear what? Revelation chapter 2 verse 10. Fear none of the things which thou shalt suffer now. You know, end up homeless. First end up losing your job. No, lose your woman. You know, if you lose your job, your woman ain't staying. You know what I'm saying? The average woman is not staying with the man that loses his job. You know, that falls on hard times. And then, then your kids gonna go. They gonna go. Because you ain't got no place for them to stay. The Lord said, with the, when you lose all that, don't fear none of the things without yourself. Your job, your house, you know, all the, all the so-called friends that you had in the world, being locked up, being defamed. You know, because the scriptures say, what? Behold, the devil, meaning sleazy, shall cast some of you into prison. Our forefathers got cast into prison. Ain't nothing new up under the sun. Our forefathers got cast into prison. And they believed on Yahweh, but Shemel Shai, and they was always delivered, man. And the ones that had to die to death, they still trusted in Yahweh, but Shemel Shai, even in the, in the face of death. They glorified the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, but Shemel Shai. Our forefathers that did have the so-called bite the dust, as they would call it. In the face of adversity, they still praise Yahweh by Shema was shot, right? And Lord willing, the Lord to give us that spirit too. It says, um, for behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. And it ain't talking about, once again, it ain't talking about a man up on the ground with a pitchfork, laughing, screaming, hooping and hollering, with fire surrounding and everybody burning for all eternity. No, it's talking about the deceiver, sleeps to eat, Esau eat them. Starting off with the Rothschilds, the Gettys, the Bloombergs, you know what I'm saying? The people that run this earth, the elite banking families, right? And cast some of us in prison, right? Why? For teaching the truth according to the Bible. For standing firm. For not bowing down and needs to bow out. You know what I'm saying? For not conforming to their system, this beast system, right? That ye may be tried. So we're going to get thrown into prison. We're going to lose certain things. Pretty much lose everything. It's, it's um, pretty much a, a rite of passage, pretty much. You know? That ye may be tried. And some of us going through it right now. Starting to lose things. And have lost things. 
all for the gospel, man. You know, for the greater good, right? That ye may be tried and ye shall have tribulation. Ten days is a period of time. Go catch some hell. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Let's prove what faith is. Let's prove what faith is right quick. Scripture said us be faithful unto death, and the Lord shall give us a crown of life. Meaning salvation, right? This is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So we're putting our trust, we're putting our faith, we're putting our hope in something that we haven't even seen. That's that's a gift for you, for real, for real. That, that showing up is a gift. For you to believe in something that you don't see? Come on, man, because the scripture says hope that is seen. What is there to hope in? You hoping in a million dollars, but you got it already. Ain't no need of you hoping in a million dollars if you already got it. Ain't no need of you hoping in salvation if you already got it. No, we're hoping in something that we don't see. We got to fight mosquitoes and all that, of course. You see? It says, um, oh, jumping to um, verse 6, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him, to please you. How about you shot? If you don't believe in things that you don't see, because that's what the Lord wants us to believe in, miracles. He wants us to believe that he can and he will deliver you or, or, or help you out in any situation. It's nothing to fear, man. When the Lord said, don't fear the coming of the heathen, the destruction of the heathen, look, don't fear. Now we're in the flesh, of course, so you're going to feel some type of way, but then your faith going to kick in. Your faith going to kick in right about now. Our faith is being built up for that great and dreadful day, right? But the Lord said, what? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, but without faith, but, I, but without believing in something that you don't see. And, and I'm going to get that in Ephesians. Matter of fact, let me just hold it so I don't forget it through the spirit of your house. But Shemel Shai, let's get Ephesians right quick. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to the Most High, Yahweh, must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Now we seeking Yahweh by Shemel Shai. Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians out there, aren't you seeking righteousness? Aren't you seeking the kingdom of heaven first? Haven't you put everything to the back burner and put Yahweh by Shem Yahweh first? Didn't we do that? And the, the Lord put his spirit on us to do that, man. We didn't do nothing on our own. We, we're, see, we're not doing nothing on our own, and we realize that, man. We give all the glory, all the praise, all the honor to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh our power, right? So let's get what grace is. Let's get what um, faith is, right? We got what faith is, we're going to show you who gave it to us, right? This is Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. For by grace are you saved, through faith. And that not of yourselves it is the gift of the Most High. So most definitely, we didn't go to the corner store. People wanted wondering why we believe in these words. What makes us believe in this word? Faith. We didn't go to the corner store and buy faith. You know, can't go to the flea market and purchase uh, like two ounces or a pound of faith. No. It has to be given to you, man. And, and the scriptures tell you, faith without works is dead. The Lord going to test your faith. He going to try your faith, man. Our faith is being tried right now. You see, we truly do believe because the Lord is looking for the true worshipers, man. The real deal, as we always say. So once again, um, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith. It's going to take faith to make it through this thing. You're going to have to actually believe in something that you don't see, man. Meshach, Shamrach, and Abednego. Daniel and the lion. Then we keep repeating those stories. Because those stories are important, man, in our walk. It says, um, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of the Most High. So faith is a gift from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, man. And, and everybody don't have it. He, he didn't even give faith to the average Israelite. Only the hopeful let has faith. And yeah, I will buy Shem Yahushua right now. And we warn our people. We give them warning through the spirit of Yahweh Ba Shem Yahushua. Tell them to turn back and everything. They don't turn back. We gave up everything for the love of Yahweh Ba Shem Yahushua. Where well, the Lord put His Spirit on us to give it all up. You see? Let's read this though. Philippians 1 and 29. The Lord had me turn to it. I didn't even have this one in the lesson, but it's all through the Spirit. Philippians chapter 2, it's like in Philippians chapter 1, verse 29. For unto, for unto you it is given in the behalf of Yahweh Shai, who they even call Jesus, not only to believe on him. Once again, belief goes back to what? Faith. 
to believe in something that you don't see. The Lord has given us the gift to believe on him. And nobody else don't got to. That's the thing about it. You see, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And behold, my re and behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me. To give every man according to his work shall be. What is what is what is what kind of work you producing? You see? This is not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. So yes, yeah, so so though we walk in this faith, suffering is a part of it too. Suffering is a part of it. All our forefathers suffered, man. But look, then they get help. Then they get help from Yahweh by Shimon Abishai. Look, and they didn't lean into their own understanding either. They trusted in the Lord. I want to get this right quick. Like I said before, a quick little lesson through the Spirit. It looked like it's going to rain in the fruit, so I want to just get some. Seems like when you come outside, you think better. This is um, Isaiah 41. And um, 14. Fear not, thou worm, Jacob. We, we consider worms. The Lord likens us unto worms. So like it. What, what kind of worm? Now tell, tell me, Israel. You know what I'm saying? You, you listeners out there. What, what the hell can a worm do? <laughs> what the hell can a worm do? A worm is defenseless. It's on no what, man. The Lord is likening us, likening us into worms, man. Jacob, right? The Israelites, right? So-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. We, we are the Israelites, right? We're Jacob, right? Fear not, thou worm, Jacob. And ye men of Israel, Yasha Allah. Look, listen. I will help thee. I will help thee. That's our faith that the Lord, the Lord has been helping us. He ain't let us down yet. You know, as long as we stay on that straight and narrow path, which the word straight means a path of difficulty, it's going to be all right. This is pretty much a right. The goal is tried in the fight. It's a rite of passage, man, that we go through what we got to go through. It says, and ye men of Israel, I will help thee, saith the Lord. The Lord is telling us this, man, and we believe in it too. And thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Like, like I said, um, somehow the video stopped or whatever, but we're going to continue on though through the Spirit. And Yahweh Bashim, I want to go to Baruch chapter 4, the fourth chapter. You see? Yeah, because we can ready to go through all hell, but at, but at the same time, let us hope in Yahweh Bashim, I was right? Baruch chapter 4, verse 21. Be of good cheer, O my children, the children of Israel, Yasha Allah, princes of the power, Negroes, Latins, and Native American Indians. Be of good cheer, right? Even though we're catching hell, right? Be of good cheer, right? Cry unto the Lord, Yahweh Bashim, I was Remember, Set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof, right? Look, and he shall deliver you from the power and hand of the enemies. Remember Job 9 and 24, the earth was given into the hands of the wicked, right? So who's ruling the earth right about now? The wicked. The Lord said, cry unto me, because I got the power to deliver you from the hands of your enemies. Sleazy eat Esau, eat them, man. The, the Lord has the power to do that, man. Wait, wait. The Lord said, don't worry about nothing. I got you. Just have faith in me. I got you, man. I got you. And the Lord do guide us, man. You see? Yahweh Bashim El Shai guide us, man. You see? Let's, let's get this right quick. Because I look, 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 look. Israel, guess what? Matter of fact, I'm going to read 22 right quick. Baruch chapter 4, verse 22. For my hope is in the everlasting that he will save you. Our hope, our only hope is in the everlasting yet. How about Shimei was shy who they even call God and Jesus Christ? That's our only hope, Israel. You got our people hoping in everything up under the sun. No, hope in the Lord, man. Hope in Yahweh How about Shimei was shy, right? Let's get this. Um, I'm going to come right back. Psalm chapter 130, verse 7. Let Israel, a people before us a place, right? Which consists of these so called Negroes, Latins, and Native Americans, right? Let Israel hope in the Lord. Let Israel hope, have faith. That hope goes back into faith. Goes back into believe, right? Let Israel hope in the Lord. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh For with the Lord there is mercy. You're not going to receive mercy from these heathens, man. Israel really think these heathens are going to show them love. Our people are so simple. You see? Our people are really T-H-R-U-U-U-U-U through. To actually believe that this devil is going to show you mercy. All hell about to break loose and this devil is going to show you mercy. He lying to you. You know what I'm saying? 
Drink the jungle juice. I'm making life better for you. Are you, are you serious? You see? Drink the jungle juice. You know what I'm saying? You know. The J-U ice. And, and, and life is going to get better for you. No. Let Israel hope in the Lord. See, that's how people lean into their own understanding. Anyway, two-thirds of the Negroes, Latins, and Native Americans. What, what do they do? What do, what do the majority of our people do? They lean into their own understanding. They say, you know, that they're trapped up. Uh, uh, who the first person that they're calling on? The Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. As soon as Israel start getting in these different situations that they know they can't get themselves out of, who do they start crying to? I mean, they crying to the wrong name, but they crying to a higher power, right? <laughs> they didn't know got power to help them out. But but for the majority of our people, it's going to be too late, right? So let's go back. Let's go right back. Baruch chapter 4, verse 22. For my hope is in the everlasting, that He will save you. And then I'm saying, said right there in that Psalms 137 that the Lord is going to show us mercy. Hell, the Lord is showing me mercy right about now. Me being able to break down the scriptures the right way, that's mercy. Right, the apostles be going into from time to time. More willing we of that number, we're going to know true mercy when the whole world, when, when Yahweh Bashimel starts putting a foot in these people's asses, right to left, left to right, you know what I'm saying? Up, down, you know what I'm saying? And we're being protected. These people are really getting ready to catch hell. It's going to be race wars, class wars, civil wars, economic wars. The men of Israel and the women of Israel, two thirds of our people, they're going to catch pure hell from the God of the Bible, man. And they don't have no hope. They're hoping is 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 in their bank account. They're hoping they're believing the things that they got. You know what I'm saying? The scripture says that's that's not hope. The things that you see are temporal. Let's see if I can get that. Things that you see are temporal, King James Version. Let's see if this is it. Yeah, this is it. The water you have by Shemel Shai. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. But while we, the hopeful elect, but while we look not at the things which are seen, our people are concentrating, they're putting their faith on things that they see, their job, their money, their status in the earth. You see, what they, what they got, you know what I'm saying? They putting their trust in that. They putting their faith in that. No. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, aka faith, we believe in things that we don't see, right? For the things which are seen are temporal, man. So your job, you you went and took the juice for your job to keep your job. That's all that's temporary. You know what I'm saying? To keep your um your status, your status in in, in life, pretty much in the world. You know. You did, oh, you took the juice for that, man. Everything that you, your house, your cars, all them cars you got, the jury and all that, your woman, your babies, all that's going to be destroyed soon come, man. You see, it, especially if they're not part of the elect. The scripture told us what? Seek out our own salvation with tr fear and trembling, right? See? Cause hell, we don't even know if we're going to make it. You too busy worried about your family making it. Hell, you better be worried about yourself making it first and foremost. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, right? By not putting your trust in the earthly things. Storing up treasures in heaven, man. Because the things that we see are temporal. Remember, remember, the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And then the Lord told us, don't even worry about it. Just look, just have faith in me. It says, um, for the things which are seen are temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. So that's what we're fighting for. We're fighting for things that we don't see. A.K.A. the kingdom of heaven, man. So let's go back. Baruch chapter 4. In the middle of verse 22, it says, um, I read the whole 22, Baruch 4, 22, for my hope is in the everlasting that will save you. And joy is come unto me from the Holy One because of the mercy which shall soon come and which shall soon come unto you from the everlasting our salvation. You see, our Savior, Salaki, which is Lord Yahweh Shai. And, and that's what that's what we got faith in, man. That's what we put out. We're putting all the eggs in the basket, man. You know what I'm saying? Laying out all the cards on the table. No plan B. We have no plan B. All right? It's only plan Yahweh by Shemiah was shot, and that's it, man. We ain't got nothing else. There's nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, but to these scriptures and to our power. Yahweh by Shemiah It ain't nothing else, Israel. You better know that. You better know that going, going into this definite structure, man. All right? As definite structure, you know what I'm saying, mayhem and chaos and all that fast approaches, you better go, you better be going into this thing with that mind state that all I got is the Lord. See, I ain't got nothing else, hands down, right? It's just, for I sent you out with mourning, 
and weeping. But the morning, that's how we fled, you know what I'm saying, in 70 AD from the land of Israel. You know what I'm saying? We're weeping and mourning. But the Most High will give you again with joy. It's like it. But the Most High, Yahweh, will, will give you to me again with joy and gladness forever, man. So when we go home, it's going to be a joyous thing. Lord willing, we on that first go around, man. Going back home on ships, man. Not slave ships either, man. Chariots. What they even call UFOs, man. Going back home in style. Remember that, man. Le left out of the land of Israel fleeing, hooping and hollering. You know what I'm saying? Had to leave everything behind, man. Couldn't run. Just, just had to jet out. The Lord just said, jet. Jet, go. But then the Lord said, look, look, man, I I'm, I'm sending you back into that land, you know what I'm saying, with a big smile on your face. That's our hope, man. That's our faith, man. That's what, that's what the Lord said. Don't fear nothing. You see? 24. Like as now the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity, meaning these other heathen nations, and seen us go ahead first in the captivity. And they was glad too. The scriptures say that they were they rejoiced when the Lord, no saying, took our power away from us, man, and turned his back on us. They rejoiced when we was being fed to alligators, crocodiles, when we was being fed to the hogs, when we was being set on fire, when we was being lynched and just whipped with that whip and all that. Look, 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 men, women, children, look, look, and babies. They rejoice at us, Israel. They rejoice at our downfall, but but we but we don't supposed to smile and rejoice at their downfall, right? We're supposed to be sad. Two thirds. Our people gotta go, Lord. Our people, two thirds gotta go, Lord. It's as like as now the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity, slave ships. The Atlantic slave trade. It was a rough one. We, 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 the scripture said, uh, no other nation suffered what we suffered, Israel. No other nation suffered like the Hebrew Israelites, like the so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, starting off with the head tribe, Jew. Damn, man. See, so you gotta laugh to stop from crying, right? It says, um, so shall they see shortly your salvation from our power. See, they seen us going to captivity. That's why it's going. That's why. That's why it's going to be so crazy. You know what I'm saying when the chariots flood the skies, man, and start beaming up so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, because they was most definitely not expecting this. They seen us going to captivity, but the Lord says shortly they're going to see our deliverance, man. See, just imagine that seeing so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans getting beamed up, man, in the chariots, man, getting new bodies and all that, man, receiving salvation, man, receiving mercy, man. It's going to be a beautiful day. That's what we long for, man. You see, that's what we fight for. It says, it says, we shall come, it will shall come upon you with great glory and brightness of the everlasting. My children, suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from the Most High. Yeah, the Lord brought all this wrath upon us for being disobedient, for going to hell off, and we deserve it too. We deserve everything that happened to us, everything that happened to me in my life. You know what I'm saying? And whatever's coming my way, I deserve it. Yeah, because I went the hell off. I know I went off in this lifetime. You know what I'm saying? I know most definitely I went off in my former life. Because if not, I wouldn't be here doing this video. I know. I get it now. I get it. Yeah, I was shy. We get it. The whole hopeful elect, we get it. The Lord got me saying that more and more. We get it. And I, I got that from either apostle, one of the apostles or one of the brethren. That saying. It says, um... My children suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from the most high for thine enemy have persecuted thee. But surely, surely, the triumph of the wicked is short and the joy of the hypocrite is but for a moment. But surely thou shalt see his destruction and shall tread upon his neck. Soon come by these heathens in, in captivity. You see? Mm, 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 mm. Oh yeah, I want to get this right quick since I mentioned that. I turn right to it too. That's the spirit. Ezra chapter 9. Just trying to do the will of Yahweh by Shemel, trying to the best of our ability. Um, this is our job too, just pushing out this, this heat, pushing out this video constantly. This is our job. Keep doing it to the best of your ability. Ezra, Ezra chapter 9, verse 13. And after all that is come, so like it, and after all that is come upon us for our evil deeds, remember everything that's happening to us right now. 
is because of our evil deeds, right? Our transgressions, our sins, right? And for our great trespass, sin, that our power, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, who the English call God of Jesus Christ, has punished us less, less Israel. So, like it, we got we to give praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. We, we must, Israel. I mean, everything that we went through, you see all those different pictures of the slavery, the auction and blocks and all that. The Lord said, look, I punish you less than our iniquities deserve. Sin upon sin, our transgressions, the Lord punished us less. See, the Lord could have brought us back in this lifetime without legs. You know what I'm saying? Could have just brought us back with just a head. You know what I'm saying? Somebody just carrying us around all day. But the Lord brought us back with legs. You know what I'm saying? Arms, eyes that can see, a nose that can smell, a mouth that can taste, that can speak. A brain that can comprehend the knowledge, wisdom, understanding of the scriptures. You better be thankful. We better be thankful, Israel. And then the Lord gave us a way out, man, through this word. The scriptures say we can't go far enough when it comes to serving Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Put forth all your energy, man. Do some. After all that has come upon us for our evil deeds and for our great trespasses, seeing that that seeing that thou our power has punished us less than our iniquities deserve and has given us such deliverance as this man the lord gave us hope man he had to do that and then the lord could have just kept our asses in captivity for, for, for shit for however long he wanted to it's been 500 and some change could have put us could have could have gave us 500 more years added to the 500 already and then another 500 after that and then another 500 come on man <laughs> the Lord could have really gave us the business, Israel. Oh boy. I'm just sitting here, sitting here just thankful as I don't know where right now. Everything I go through, whatever I'm going through, I'm thankful. That the Lord giving me the strength to make it through whatever I go through. Listen, listen to this, Israel. This is going for the Hebrew Israel. It's us. Yasha Allah, the princess of the power, man. This is what the Lord had to say about us. Even though he kicked our asses right to left, left to right, man, up and down the street. First Samuel, chapter 12, verse 20. I'm going to start at 22. For the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahusha, will not forsake his people. The Israelites, for his great name's sake, the Lord is doing it. This, everything that's happening right now is for the Lord's name's sake. The deliverance is going to come to the elect of the nation of Israel. Lord, when we're part of that novel, it's, it's all being done for his name's sake. It ain't nothing that we did. It was so great, man, to receive deliverance. The Lord is giving deliverance to those that he want to give deliverance to of his will. Always remember that. I always remind myself that each and every day I tell myself that. And then the Lord be having me tell the brothers too. The Lord don't need us, brethren. See, the Lord don't need us. Remember, always remember, the Lord can raise up rocks, man, to serve him. Yeah, how about Shemel Shai don't need us? You see? It says, um, for the Lord will not forsake his people, his people. The word his is possessor. They ain't talking about the whole world, man. All right? For his great name's sake. Because he have look, look, because it have pleased the Lord to make you his people. Our people don't even appreciate being a Hebrew Israelite. The Lord said it pleased him to, to make us his people. That, that, that spoke volume right there. That, that spoke volume right there, man. The Lord said when he created the Hebrew Israelite, it pleased him to create us. It pleased Yahweh Bashim Shai to give us a standard. It pleased the God of the Bible to give us the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Bible that are not done away with. It pleased him, Israel. Hmm. Wow, man. Let's read down. Moreover, as for me, Yahweh forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. But I will teach you the good and the right way. That's what the God of the Bible got his men set up to do. To teach you the good and right way. That righteous path, the path of our forefathers that followed and believed in the name of Yahweh by Shemiah was shy. That's what, that's what we were set up to do, right? It says, um, only fear the Lord. You see, you got to fear the Lord. For you not to fear the things that are coming, you must fear the Lord. We must fear Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, right? Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth 
with all your heart, meaning all your mind. For consider how great things he have done for you, man. Damn. Consider the great things that the Lord has done. I, I, I got my own crib, man, in captivity, man. I got food in there. First and foremost, I mean, I got this word, first and foremost. But the great things the Lord has done for us, he, he delivered us from enough dangers, man, in this lifetime. You see? Gave us a way out through this word. I want to get that too, James. Scripture said, look how great things that he has done for. We can't take nothing for granted. Nothing for granted. And then, then look, remember, the Lord didn't have to do nothing for us, man. Nothing at all. See, we got Israel sitting back thinking that um, they deserve something. They don't deserve nothing. We don't deserve nothing, man. All right? We deserve to get to, be, to get slapped the hell around. Many times we done went off, and the Lord's still showing us mercy, man. Got that head, got the angels looking out for us each and every night. We going to sleep comfortable. The angels are protecting our cribs. Because, look, people want to do things to us. You know what I mean? We're on that red list. You know what I'm saying? Look, they know where we stay and everything. But throughout the night, the Lord had, had them angels protecting us, man. Watching over our cribs and everything, man. You see, watching over our family members. See? Making sure we go to work and make it back home safe. James chapter 1, verse 21. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. And receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. Now this devil once again is gonna come down with great wrath. Seek the words of Yahweh by Shimon was shy. And his righteousness, this word is able to save our soul. This word is what's protecting us, man. What did the scripture say? In in thy truth will I hope. We we hope in this truth. Nothing else. Salakia. Our people want to stay here and listen to that, listen to that loud shit every day, all day. Our people love love hell anyway. The average Negro, Latino, and Native American they love hell. They love it, man. They love hell. This is Jeremiah. I'm gonna bring out a couple more scriptures and I'm gonna wrap it up, man. Just want to bring out a couple scriptures on just not fearing nothing, man. The Lord said, "Don't fear, damn it, don't fear." This is um, Jeremiah chapter 39, verse um, Jeremiah chapter 39, verse 17. But I will deliver thee in that day when all hell break loose during Jacob's trouble. We, we trust it and we believe it in your house. L listen, man. Listen, Jeremiah 39, 17. But I will deliver thee in that day, saith the Lord, Yahweh by Shemiah Rashi, and thou shalt not be given into the hand of the men of whom thou art afraid. For I will surely deliver thee, and thou shalt not fall by the sword, but thy life shall be for a prey unto thee. Because thou hast put thy trust in me, saith the Lord. You hear that? I'm, I'm feeling real um, comforted right about now. Through the spirit of Yahweh Bashimel Shah, I'm, I'm feeling real. I'm, re I'm feeling real confident in Yahweh Bashimel Shah, and I'm feeling real um, comforted in these words. That, that was a comforting scripture right there, man. In the times that we're living in, you see, and anything could pop off at any second now. That's why. That's why our eyes are on the prize. That's why the scriptures tell us to watch as well as pray. You see, I, I want to read that again. Jeremiah 39 and 18. For I will surely deliver thee. And look, look, do you believe in that though? Do you believe in that? Do you have faith in that scripture? For I was sure, because look, Sleazy Eke already come in like a madman. You know what I'm saying? Straight, straight teeth, man. Like a wild beast, man. You see? But the Lord said, What? For surely, for I will surely deliver thee, and thou shalt not fall by the sword, but thy life shall be for a prayer to thee. Because thou hast put thy trust in me, saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And I got plenty of scriptures that I can bring out, but I'm going to bring out one more, and then I'm going to wrap it up. Lord willing, the elect of the nation of Israel is edified. This devil going to come in. Let him come in, but what did the Lord say? The devil going to come in, but what did the Lord say, man? All right? The Lord said, there shall no. And then we're gonna, of course, we're going to go through things. No, I'm not saying that. We're going to go through things. You see? The Lord gonna make a way out of no way, as He has always done. Sirach chapter two, you know where I'm going. Sirach chapter two, verse ten. Look at the generations of old and see 
there ever any trust in the Lord and what's confounded? Or that's why I say, um, blessed is he that readeth. Read the accounts of our forefathers, man, who was delivered in a time of need. Look, those men are back now. And now we're in a time of need once again. The men of the Lord written up in the scriptures, they're back now. <laughs> they're back now, man. Needing the Lord once again, man. You see, calling on Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai once again, man. The whole foot let. It's a beautiful story, man. Oh, Lord. It says, or, um, or, or, and what's forsaken, and what's confounded, Salakia, or did any abide in his fear, and what's forsaken, no, no, or whom did he ever, ever despise, they called upon him, who did the Lord ever hate, they called upon his name, who did the Lord ever hate, that, that had faith in him, nobody, it says, for the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, look, then he just said, then, then we read that in Baruch, then we read that in um, Psalms um, 130, or what is it, Psalms, yeah, yeah um, Psalms 130, and seven, I'm thinking, let Israel hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy and compassion. Come on, man. It's just, um, for the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, long suffering and very pitiful, and forgive the sins, right? Our transgressions, right? That's what sin is, the, um, the breaking of the laws. And saveth in the time of affliction. Who, who saves in the time of affliction? Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. And I ain't, ain't, ain't gonna be the dead horse, man. I just want to throw that out there right quick. Through the spirit of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. And Lord willing, the elect, the hopeful, Lord willing, the elect was edified. You know? Only, that's, that's why we do these lessons. Matter of fact, one, one more. Let's see. One more. This is why we do these lessons. Exhortation. Exhortation, King James Version. I want to bring out this last scripture and wrap it up. Let's see. Bear with me. Um, let me see. Damn, where? Two, matter of fact, I got two. This is one of them, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13. But exhort one another daily. Um, henceforth, the uh, page that Apostle Gabar got, daily um, edification, daily exhortation. You see, pretty much, you know what I'm saying, um, promoting pretty much every one of us to keep going, keep pushing, keep fighting. But exhort one another daily. Don't give up, keep fighting. While it is, while it is called today, while we still got, while these videos are still being pushed out. Oh, we still got time to push this word. It's coming to a close, man. It's coming to an end. At least any of you be be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin, man. So we got to constantly exhort each other each and every day, man. Push. Just keep pushing, man. Especially as we see the um, day fastly approaching, man. You see, we see the day of the Lord. We see death and destruction fastly approaching. Exhort each other every day, man. You see? If you don't work, you don't eat, right? In the word edification, right? You know what I'm saying? Let's, um, let's um, break down the definition. Edification, it means to build. To edify, it means to build up in a moral or religious sense, instructions, improvement and process, progress of the mind and knowledge and morals or in faith and holiness, right? And here's a scripture right quick. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Let's get it right quick. Get it in the sword. I get it right. I got one more after this and I'm going to wrap it up. First Corinthians chapter 14. Let's see. Let me get it. Bear with me. It was verse 3. First Corinthians chapter 14 verse 3. But he that prophesied, because that's what we do. We prophesy. We tell you what's going to happen before it even happened, right? According to the Bible, right? But he that prophesied speaketh unto men to edification, to build, and exhortation, pretty much to continue to fight, keep pushing, and comfort. That's our job, man. That's our job. And once again, the word edification means to build. You see? To build. Man. 
So that's our job. And Lord willing, I'm saying the elect is edified with this lesson, man. For none of the things which thou shalt suffer. The Lord got us, man. Shalom.